Welcome back to Bullet Catcher Gaming. This is, of course, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This is going to be the beginning of a new video series where we look at legends of these special forces and see them realized um, within their own skin, effectively, in a rower, on a rower, um, fighting against Sentinel and the Wolves. So we thought we would start off in this first episode featuring um, a very recent legend and that is Christian Craighead of the 22nd SAS. Now, we will cover people from all different um, countries. If you have a suggestion of someone you'd like to see realised, a real-life legend, um, please let us know in the comments below, and, um, and we will do our best to cover that. We're going to go through a bit of the history, we're going to go through a little bit about the individual, and then a little bit about um, you know the skin and how we try to put it together things like that if you would um, if you would like to then please hit the like if you're not subscribed it would be amazing if you would subscribe thank you for all the recent subscribers um, let's get on with it so the background of this for Christian Craighead so basically um, he has become kind of infamous as such from an attack that took place on the 15th of January 2019. It was in um, Kenya. So the attack occurred at 14 Riverside Drive complex in the Westlands of Nairobi in Kenya. It's an upscale kind of hotel office complex uh, which hosts the Dusty D2 Hotel and the Commission on Revenue Allocation. There's other clients in there as well, including um, Amadeus IT Group, I think LG Electronics. There was a few banking groups in there as well. Um, and I think Kenya's main um, cell network was also based in there. So some high profile uh, companies were based within it. So the incident began on half past two on the 15th of January 2019 and it was basically concluded a few minutes before 10 the following day 10 in the morning that is now initial reports of gunfire um, were heard and also two explosions at the hotel the attackers were estimated to be between four and six and they arrived in two vehicles one of the attackers went, uh, went and blew himself up um, in the Secret Garden restaurant. Now the remaining terrorists forced uh, guards to open the gates of 14 Riverside Drive by shooting them and lobbing grenades as they made their way into the complex. They ignited some vehicles parked in the car uh, in their car park, and the uh, and then but then the Recce Company, the anti-terrorism division of the Kenya Police Force. The general service unit was sent in to combat the militants. There were also members of private security forces and unarmed individuals along with some off-duty police officers were the first to respond. And now this is where we get into Christian Craighead. So a mast wearing a balaclava as seen right here. Member of the British SAS who was in the country to conduct training um, he was also accompanied by a member of the Diplomatic Protective Services Tactical Response Unit, which is the DPSTRU, and his name was Dan J. Prestalo. Um, he was also there. Now, they turned up and they started clearing floor by floor of the office and car park buildings, and they could have been heard uh, shouting, Eagle, Eagle, security forces, trying to alert um, hostages that were hiding that they were obviously good guys. Both individuals were seen on mainstream media clips um, escorting groups of hostages, carrying wounded hostages um, before running back into the complex time and time again while the attackers were shooting down on them. The Australian High Commission security detail also exchanged some fire with the terrorists as they made their way to the complex um, injuring one of the uh, attackers. Uh, while it had been thought that the attack had been neutralised after a few hours, though gunfire and explosions were heard again early on the 16th of January, um, and it turns out that Christian Craighead had neutralised many of the terrorists, um, 
and it was actually awarded the Conspicuous Gallantry Cross for his extreme bravery. Now, the president of Kenya had initially said that 14 people had been killed in the attack, but it actually turned out it was 21 civilians and five attackers had been killed, um, and someone who was critically in injured died later on the following year, so it actually brought the death toll of civilians to 22. Now, Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement, um, and they said that the attack was a response to the US president at the time, Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Now, the Islamic group, Al-Shabaab, had been opposed to Kenyan involvement anyway in the Somali civil war. The terrorist group had previously attacked the suburbs of Westlands during the 2013 Westgate shopping mall attack which had left 67 people. Um, Al-Shabaab were involved in a mass shooting of the Garissa University College students, leaving 147 dead and many others injured. The incident was the country's worst terrorist attack since the 1998 United States Embassy bombings, which left over 200 people dead. So these guys obviously really did mean business and the legend that is now uh, Christian Craighead obviously stepped up and uh, and got the job done. Um, sometimes I believe that these people don't always get the recognition that they deserved, um, and that's why we want to cover it. But also, obviously, we love Breakpoint, and why not bring uh, an, an amazing individual like this into the game and also give people a little bit of history about some of these people. So... Um, I mean, Christian Craighead, a little bit of information. Obviously, we don't know too much because of, um, you know, because of his work. But we do know he was born in the northeast of England. And then Christian Craighead entered the Parachute Regiment as a teenager, was then selected for its elite Pathfinder platoon before joining the SAS, from which he very recently um, retired. While in the British Army, he had numerous operational deployments, including multiple tours of Iraq and Afghanistan. He had been wounded in action several times, I believe, or at least once. And obviously, his single-handed actions, almost during the Al-Shabaab terrorist attack, um, has made him uh, an anonymous hero. And has earned him, like I said before, the conspicuous gallantry cross. And an audience with President Trump... Um, and it, he's actually, um, it, it, it's quite fascinating really because, you know, not many people do get to uh, meet the president. So that was really interesting. But there we have it. That's a little bit about Christian Craighead. Um, now, if you look at the character that we have created on screen, as you can see him now, um, this is what he actually looked like um, during the uh, terrorist attack. This is what he was wearing. It wasn't too difficult to recreate. Um, it, pretty pretty simplistic, but there are a few things that I couldn't get right. The Obviously, he's carrying a C8 assault rifle, which doesn't exist in the game. Now, it, there's multiple weapons that you could use as a replacement. Um, and I went through and had a look. I, I, I played around for about half an hour trying to choose which one. Also, the colours that he's using on his assault rifle, if you actually zoom in on the picture, there's like almost like small white dots um, within the camo. There's nothing like that in the game. So I, I tried to get it as close as possible with something that looked okay um, because I know people like these things to be as accurate as possible, but unfortunately the game just doesn't allow complete accuracy in terms of his shirt. The colour is probably slightly darker than it should be. The shirt that he was actually wearing on the day was almost like a kind of purpley blue um, as opposed to this kind of blue that I've got here. But it really was the kind of closest that I could kind of come up with. Um, the backpack is fairly similar, um, pretty good overall. And obviously the um, leg drop holster I couldn't change the colour of 
and it had to stay in that kind of desert now uh, desert tan but on on his actual character on the day what he was wearing he had like a kind of multi-cam um color on um but the actual strap was still like a desert tan so it's fairly spot on we managed to get him with the jeans obviously um and uh, you know a, a a vest that was there's not a vest that's 100 percent accurate but a vest that's very very similar to what he was wearing obviously the balaclava you can make very easily um in like olive drab um but overall i thought he looked fairly accurate for the representation of him i think you'd look at him straight away in game and if you've seen pictures of christian craighead or if you a lot of people may not have known his name um he's now actually an mbe as well um it, but he you i think you'd know it was him um what i'd like to do um on this series is um like i said concentrate on real life special forces legends um, from a particular mission or something like that or get up that they were wearing on a particular mission um, I do want to do two of my personal two heroes that I've read a lot about um, two guys who I have huge respect for um, from the film Black Hawk Down um, that's where most people will probably know them from um, and I'm probably going to do them next, but I'm, I would really like some suggestions uh, from people if they'd like to see someone covered. Um, so, yeah, um, that's what I'm going to do yet. Yeah, do next. Um, Randy Sugar and Gary Gordon, um, two absolute legends who fell in battle that day after putting up an unbelievable fight against uh, crazy odds members of the uh, first special forces operational detachment delta um, so i'm going to cover them next thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it just a little bit of history don't want to make the video too long um, thank you so much for watching um, take care i'll see you on the next one bye bye